Okay, and welcome back. We've passed turn. It's late September 1853, and uh, let's have a look at developments in the Balkan Peninsula. So, um, as ordered, um, uh, Omar Pasha has uh, sort of stayed tight in the Zvornik kind of bottleneck. It's an artificial bottleneck, really, of course, created by the principalities of Serbia and Montenegro. Um, but Russia does not have transit rights through either of those territories, nor does it have rights to pass through the Austrian Empire. So, the main Russian force. Um, really, the largest Russian force in the Balkans, I think, is is this force under Mariev Kars, and he is bottled up in Sarajevo. Omar's activated, so we'll revisit that uh, momentarily. Now, the remnants of the Russian force that was defeated at Salonika, we must have bypassed. It looks like it. Uh, you know, we we intended obviously to pursue it north, stay hard on its heels, and we thought that force had maybe folded in to marry of Kars's force in Sarajevo that we just kind of pushed it in but it seems that a portion of the force held in in Macedonia we must have just bypassed it it was obviously set to evade combat and it kind of utilized the terrain I guess the kind of difficult mountainous terrain the valleys and stuff like that to conceal itself uh, from Omar's force that force has now moved back into Salonika that's under uh, the command of uh, the famous Paskovic uh, the loser of many a battle he is now, uh, yeah, he's now besieging Salonika. His force is significantly enfeebled. I mean, we should point out that the battle at Salonika was really the biggest battle of this year, I would say by far, and it was his force that was utterly mauled. I mean, it was, you know, we got two national morale points in the back of it, uh, and that's one engagement, and obviously retook the town, which gave us another five national morale points. So his force is significantly enfeebled, it's weakened, um, but it is back in Salonika. And of course, in, in addition to that, we have um, Vorontsov, you know, Prince Vorontsov is besieging Plevna with a not inconsiderable force, and that force is certainly large enough to press the issue, I think, at uh, Plevna if it wants to. We'll set that, uh, the, the town command. What have we got? Two fortresses. Yeah, we've got two divisions plus a uh, brigade, and same kind of situation, really. These are just generic garrisons that are created on the basis of a siege. They are, I mean, we haven't held Salonika for very long, so this is a very small scratch force. It's, what, 20,000 men? You know, shade under. Here, I think Paskovic is going to be hard pressed to assault Salonika. I really do. I may be wrong uh, here, but I can't see him pulling this off. Uh, he's low on supplies, which means that he's probably he's going to have to try and press the issue here. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Now we can see that uh, we had some Bashi bazooks in Macedonia. Uh, they were engaged by his forces. He moved into Salonika and brushed aside. Uh, with more than half of the, of the force uh, being casualties. Um, it looks like, yeah, I mean, that force, I think, then fell back into Salonika and was further engaged. And we can see here that it looks like Paskovic has got about 6,000 men, probably slightly more now. I think his command may have moved in kind of, you know, it may be broken up into its component parts, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, these are very small kind of engagements, obviously. It looks like the Bashi Bazook simply surrendered there, I, I think. So that is a, a Bashi Bazook force. Um, yeah, completely destroyed. To tell you the truth, look, but the Bashi Bazooks are on the clock. You know, they're remnants of our earlier army. We don't really want paramilitary forces for domestic security. What we want to do is to build up proper garrison forces anyway. So these forces would have been decommissioned probably after this war. Um, again, a small engagement. Bashi Bazooks at Agosta. Uh, brushed aside by uh, what looks like six light cavalry. Uh, I mean, this might be a cavalry division, I'm guessing, um, which I think maybe is not this force. It looks like a force trying to push through and join up with the Russians here. Um, again, a very small kind of engagement. Bashi Bazooks, I'm thinking it might be uh, this force that's fallen back, is now in, yeah, is now in, um, in the fortress of Sofia. Um, and then we have a battle of the Gulf of Varna. Okay, so that's uh, garrison forces being brought down again. It may be a similar play to what they kind of had intended to do before, is to move garrison forces round in preparation for taking Salonika. They can put additional garrison forces there. They were sunk off of Varna. We are going to now move the Imperial fleet back into Constantinople. Um, make sure that is really uh, going into Constantinople and not fusing with forces. Uh, we don't want to do that, really, do we? Let's move this force out of the way. There we go clunky interface alert right we'll set this uh 
Set this to evade combat, passive posture, and uh, yeah, the Imperial fleet now it's a period of time. It requires a period of time to stock up on supplies and munitions and such. That's the situation in the West End. We have what looks like principally three or four large deployments. We've got Vorontsov's force now besieging Plevna, uh, Paskovich besieging Salonika, and we have the large Russian force, um, the biggest of the Russian forces in the Moria of Kars, at Sarajevo. And of course, we only have one field command, so we are going to be spending this autumn and winter spinning plates in the Balkan Peninsula. We can see that Omar Pasha is working into his supply uh, train. That suggests that obviously limited military control over Niche, Macedonia and so on is going to be, start becoming an issue. So we do need to act fairly quickly to kind of deal with that. Uh, we've got a cavalry brigade set to kind of a faint probe attack. But we're going to get this, uh, this force into Niche to basically consolidate military control in this region and open up a kind of a, a corridor race really, so we can get supplies from the depot at Sofia to Omar Pasha. That's the situation in the West. Now the most the most notable thing here of course is the fact that this force is commanded by Vorontsov. We will remember that Vorontsov this time last year was the Russian man in the East. He was leading the Russian efforts in the Southern Caucasus to what on reflection looks like really serve as a distraction and draw our forces away from the European theatre. He twice besieged cars, both times fell back. And, you know, in the last, over this last summer, the only force that we have seen in eastern Anatolia has been, um, uh, well, uh, Russian forces under the command of either the Tsar or the Tsarevich. This suggests to me that the Russians have relocated significant forces from the southern Caucasus to Bassarabia. This is now coming into play, led by Vorontsov. It looks like he has a corps. Uh, and a, a comprise, well, he has an army corps plus a few divisions and some brigades supporting him there. Um, and the fact that we're seeing the Tsar and the Tsarevich in the southern Caucasus suggests to me that the Russians have been bringing down forces from the north, from kind of the Moskovoy, St. Petersburg area, at a guess. So, I mean, this year, this summer, we can see that the Russians have definitely upped the ante. You know, the war is starting to really heat up. We're starting to see a much more serious Russian commitment to the war. In the first year of the war, it's probably fair to say they underestimated us. They've been stung in a number of engagements. And, uh, you know, twice they've kind of caused some upsets. Of course, they took Sofia and they took uh, Salonika. We managed to take both of these cities back. And I'll probably say that by late summer, we can see that uh, the, the disaster that befell us in the early part of the campaigning season is at least partially recovered. Uh, we're sitting at 90 national morale, the Russians at 96. So, you know, not great, but not terrible sort of thing. Um, in the east, um, Abdul Karim Nadir is not active uh, this term. Uh, we're going to keep him in Batumi, but the plan is off-season uh, that we're going to begin to use his force now, which is compiled. We've got the cavalry division, which was, of course, engaged in action around Dia, uh, Diyarbakir. Uh, this force has now rejoined his command, and we once again have a mobile element to that command. He's not activated, so it's going to take him a long time to move to cars. Uh, we're going to do that anyway, and we're going to begin to prepare him for an offensive in the southern Caucasus. The plan is we want to try and take Erevan, Tiflis, and in taking both of these fortresses, the plan is to destroy the fortress and the depot inside it, and to begin to deprive the Russians of the ability to conduct operations in eastern Anatolia. If this comes off, we'll detach a force and look to do the same in Baku. We're not going to be holding these regions. The plan is just to deny them a base, really, to kind of uh, conduct operations in eastern Anatolia. That's the plan for this autumn and winter. What happens, obviously, you know, yeah, it's like it's not completely in our hands. We, we don't know where the Russian forces are, um, really, in, in sort of the southern Caucasus, the mountainous terrain. We can see already, even in late September, in some of these mountain peaks, we're seeing some snowfall. We've got rain in cars, so the weather's already starting to deteriorate. I don't think we're going to have the Indian summer that we enjoyed last year. Uh, now we've retaken the kind of depot um, and the fortress at Diyarbakir. Uh, the plan is to fan these bashy bazooks out, give us a bit of defense in depth and function as a kind of tentacles in eastern Anatolia. And also suppress any kind of local population that are looking to kind of uh, local rebels that might be looking to exploit, um, you know, exploit the ongoing war. For the uh, for the sh short term, we'll keep the light cavalry brigade in place. As I say, the division has rejoined um, Abdul Karim's force. Now we do have another plan which we're going to start pu putting into place. I think this autumn and winter, we've got a reserve army corps, plus we've got a cavalry division at Constantinople, plus we have two completed 
uh, uh, infantry divisions. One of them is kind of conscripts, the other is just regular. And uh, we're going to move these forces now up to this. Use um, riverine transports. We're going to begin to um, concentrate a force in Adrianople. Uh, we've got British in Romelia, so we'll leave them there for the time being. Um, yeah, begin to get some kind of force concentration, I think, in um, in Adrianople. And what we're going to do is in October. Well, let's 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 plan out um, Omar Pasha uh, for the next fortnight. He's in a reasonably good shape. He sat tight last sort of fortnight, so he has some kind of reorganization. He is working through supplies, so I think we need to move fast. We want to engage uh, and defeat uh, the main Russian uh, field army, the largest force they have on the Balkan Peninsula in Sarajevo. So to that end, we are going to launch an attack. We're going to assault the town. It's going to take him six days. Weather's still reasonably clement. Um, once we do that, we're going to instantly turn back and we're going to head towards Niche. That's 15 days. The idea being... That's my uh, that's my phone beeping. Let's turn that off. <laughs> uh, the idea being um, that we want to try and get um, Omar Pasha as close as we can um, to Sofia and the supply depot because of his deteriorating supply situation. Also, the thinking is the Russians are likely, if they're engaged, badly defeated, they might try and slip past, fall back, or there might be Russian forces moving up to relieve them. So the idea is to kind of uh, retake Sarajevo and then pursue the Russian force. I mean, the only place it can fall back, really, is kind of towards Agosta or Plevna. Maybe it moves up towards Bihak or Sava or something like that. But anyway, uh, we can't sit around in the kind of Bosnian enclave too long. Um, that's the kind of plan. Once he is in niche, we are going to relieve one of the three-star generals. My thinking is Kershid Pasha. He's in command of the Imperial Guard Corps at the moment, probably of the junior staff officers under Omar. He's probably the more dynamic, uh, most aggressive officer, which is why, precisely why he's in command of the Guard Corps. Um, so we're going to basically relieve him of command of the Imperial Guard. Uh, we're going to switch him out with Salim Pasha, turn Salim Pasha's cavalry division into an independent cavalry force, within Omar Pasha's army, and then we're going to give Selim the Imperial Guard. O uh, Kershid is going to break off, and he's going to be sent to Adrianople to take command of this force that's going to be coalescing. So we're going to start building up a second army, basically, um, in um, in Adrianople. To that end, we're going to begin the construction of an additional cavalry, uh, sorry, cavalry, an additional infantry division that's going to be 91, that's good. Manufacture goods, steel is okay, 16, so we're only going to be able to do one this, this turn, that's fine. And maybe let's have a look at a field artillery force. Yeah, a couple of field artillery regiments as well, I think. Okay, we can only do one, why is that? Okay, officers again, right, fine. Um, so we've got two completed. Using river in transports in the Aegean, we're going to move those boys up to Adrianople. We've got another force being constructed, that's an infantry division plus um, an artillery regiment. And we're going to continuously try and beef this force out in Adrianople. Um, yeah, and, and begin to get something resembling a, a proper field command. I mean, with these divisions, we're going to be looking at, I think, about 50,000 men, uh, 50, 60,000 men. Ultimately, we want to bring it up to about 80,000, 70 to 80,000. And on that basis, you know, we won't have Omar Pasha running around spinning plates. Uh, we'll have, you know, um, uh, a kind of fallback option. We will have a second command. That second field command, the second army, if you like, um, will be under the command of a dynamic and aggressive um, officer who's is, is, is got a reasonably high strategic value. You know, he's not quite on the level of Omar Pasha. He's not a kind of Napoleon General Lee type figure, but he's good. He's tested as well. You know, he's a good, tested, aggressive and dynamic officer not a great defensive commander we need to keep that in mind but if we keep him back in adrianople the idea is he's always going to be striking out we're going to mostly use him on the offensive as a kind of counter strike force really uh, a kind of emergency rapid reaction force sort of thing that's pretty much the plans the imperial fleet's going to head back to constantinople um the economy is beginning to look um kind of more normal really after the chaos of the kind of, uh, of russian forces rampaging through the balkans obviously they still have a significant presence there but the area around constantinople is recovered that has allowed us to actually begin these constructions which we've attempted to do for some time so we now have the, 
We've now properly begun the construction of a military gear and an ammunition factory, nearing the completion of one of the manufactured goods factories and a second one to follow. Uh, that represents the limits of what we can actually build in Constantinople at the moment, uh, just because the amount of construction there is, is phenomenal. Um, I think we're going to be, begin the building of a second... What will that leave us? That will leave us... Well, let's have a look very quickly. That will leave us 110 private capital. And what's the operational cost of our economy at this stage? Uh, 61. And our imports are fairly modest. We're not importing any manufactured goods. Yeah, I think that's okay. I don't think that's going to incur any inflation. Um, yeah, happy with that. Um, so we'll begin the, yeah, begin the construction of a second manufactured goods shop in Constantinople. Um, Exports have all been set. I think probably soon we're going to turn back on the kind of conversion where we convert agricultural goods into canned food um, because we've got quite a lot of cereals, fish, and uh, fruit now kind of stockpiled. Um, we'll give it one more turn and then we'll kind of do that, I think, probably um, in early October. That's it. Um, in terms of Aiden, the ongoing Aiden drama, because of the s significant size of. Um, Yemeni forces at Hodaida, um, we can't really engage that force. I'm going to keep the Marines and the kind of conscript brigade back. We're going to hold at all costs outside Sana. We're detaching the cavalry division. We're going to head that, uh, head that force south. It's going to take 18 days. The idea is we want to get to Aden. We want to get enough military control in Aden, and then very quickly we're going to build a fortress. We're not going to build just a colonial fortress. The plan is to build a proper city-sized fortress, like a proper fortress. Um, depots, um, a port there, you know, and maybe use that more as a kind of basis for operations as opposed to, to SANA. Um, yeah, that's it. As I say, um, uh, in terms of kind of economic indices, 62 goods on the national, 62 units of goods on the national market for 226 private capital. That's decent. Happy with that. That's starting to look more normal, you know. Um, because of the kind of chaos, um, you know, the sort of... Um, you know, rampaging Russian armies moving through our territory and this sort of thing. This does suppress domestic consumption a little bit. Um, and as such, the, the you know, we've actually, during, the, I mean, since the, this, since the beginning of this war, we've actually had really dramatic economic growth. But it's not showing yet. It's going to take time to show. I mean, at the moment, you know, you could say that sort of a large part of, I mean, in the last year, you can say that the Constantinople, in terms of the number of manufacturers we have there, has doubled. You know, I mean, it's incredible, really. Now, this really is, uh, you know, like a, a city of significant industrial development and even compare it to any other modern industrial city by the time these manufactories are completed you know it's going to be sort of almost like london that's going to have the same kinds of factories you know uh, we will get a luxury goods factory in there at some point as well but it's starting to look you know even bigger than paris so constantinople is becoming uh, a, a you know a, a big modern industrial city for this sort of time um yeah, nothing else to report. Let's have a quick look through any kind of intelligence uh, reports. Obviously, we know that we're trying to assert uh, protect what's status over Dubai. That continues. Um, no problems there. One thing I should point out really quickly, I often kind of forget things or omit things, not intentionally, but um, it looks like the British are now, not quite in the Crimea, but the British are conducting an independent campaign against the Russians, which is interesting. They've taken two towns in kind of eastern sort of uh, eastern Ukraine, southeastern Ukraine, looks like a raiding force has got as far north as uh, Zhutomir. This is interesting. I mean, this is this this is good. You know, it'll kind of draw Russian forces away. It looks like a fairly limited operation. It looks like the Swedes still have a raiding force, or at the very least, they had a raiding force that um, yeah, that it, it looks like it was landed at um, Nikolastad and has kind of penetrated into central Finland. Again, that's good stuff for us, and we'll keep a careful eye on that situation. Um, so I'm going to pause here, past turn, and um, begin recording again uh, in what will be early October. Um, and I'll just make sure that I have set all the moves that I've wanted to. Yep, Omar set to move. Hopefully, I'm I'm right about Salonika. Hopefully, Salonika holds out. We don't want another disaster there. I mean, the last analysis, this is a small force. If it falls, it's temporary. We'll get Omar back down um, towards kind of Salonika and, and resolve the situation there. If it gets if it gets kind of messy again. Uh, but yep, got a pass turn here, and I shall see you on the other side. Okay, welcome back then. We're in early October 53, and uh, yeah, it's been a, an interesting string of battles. Um, good run for Omar Pasha. So let's have a look. First battle then was the Battle of Zvornik. It looks like a, a Russian force was trying to kind of push through, I think probably from um, 
Well, there was a Russian force actually in Zvornik, which had come from Agosta, which was trying to break through and join up with uh, Dmitry, um, Dmitry Austin Sarkin's force. That force was completely destroyed. Um, obviously a very small force, 6,300 men. That force was wrapped up. Um, got some prisoners there as well. First big battle then, Battle of Sarajevo. Um, a success, not the kind of you know uh, overwhelming kind of success. I mean, we you know we inflict 5,000 more casualties on the Russians than we receive. We're going up against a large Russian force that is in good shape. Um, yeah, uh, so pretty close run affair, um, but two rounds of combat in the bag to us. Now, uh, what we anticipated did come to pass. The Russians um, fell back. Okay, that's a different engagement. So Nish. That light cavalry brigade were looking to move in to secure the rear. Uh, that has, um, yeah, that basically was engaged and had to break off. We're going to fall that force back to Kosovo, I think, set that to evade combat. Um, but after that, um, Omar Pasha from Sarajevo then doubled back to move back on himself into Zvornik, which is where he is now. Engaged the Russians in an additional action. We lose one regiment from the one of presumably the independent cavalry division. Uh, we inflict 11,000 casualties, take 9,000 of our own. So two close run battles, both victories for us, however. We compel the Russians to break off and fall back, um, but no kind of, um, you know, no kind of annihilation of a Russian force. But again, we're going up against a well organized and substantial Russian force in this case. I'm thinking from here we continue our move actually because our force is in pretty ropey shape. Um, it's now pretty exhausted, it's sustained casualties. So we need to try and recover our position as best we can. Further to that, a portion of Vorontsov's force has broken off and it appears to be besieging Sofia. So the plan now is to secure the rear, anchor ourselves in the center, I think. Um, it looks like actually it's this brigade that is in Sofia. I think this Russian force under Gorchakov is in Agosta. But we want to be a little bit careful here. We've got Russian forces to the west, you know, to the east, to the west, to the south. Uh, so we want to fall back. We want to secure the area around Sofia, draw on the supplies uh, in the fortress um, to get uh, Omar Pasha's supply situation a little bit better, get some replacements, get some recovery going on. And then the choice is to move south, um, destroy the Russian force there, or to move north and uh, relieve Plevna. We'll kind of, um, you know, we'll fall off that bridge when we come to it. But uh, yeah, no, no, I mean, no defeats or no significant defeats in the West. Um, but again, it's just not enough, is it? Uh, we have reduced this Russian force fairly substantially. We've inflicted casualties. We've inflicted more casualties than we took. But of course, we had to do most of the moving, so our force is a bit more disorganized than the Russian force. Um, that's it pretty much for the West. Nothing else to report. Uh, we have got a force now uh, kind of coalescing in um, Adrianople. Let's have a look at how big this is. It's 50,000, plus we've got another force that's being constructed. Um, uh, yeah, what do we do from here? Let's have a look. My thinking is uh, we've, got be, we've got to kind of clear an avenue, really. I think once we get into Sofia, uh, should we just move that force on into Sofia entirely? Yeah, 14 days. What the hell? Let's do it. Let's press on into Sofia and then sit tight there. From Sofia, we'll break a force off. Romelia will we'll break one of the commanders off. We'll uh, relieve Kershid Pasha of his command. Oh, hang on. Where's Kershid Pasha? <laughs> Ooh, uh, let's read the reports, shall we? Uh, right, okay. One of our commanders, Kershid Pasha, was killed uh, during the Battle of Zvornik. Baka. Right. I hadn't noticed that before I'm pausing. <laughs> I think that's the first, um, yeah, that's the first significant commander we've lost. Damn. He was pretty good as well. We still have two three-star generals, uh, but that does leave Omar Pasha's staff command um, a little bit vulnerable, isn't it? Well, let's rejig this force straight away anyway. Okay. Right, yeah, so first significant commander fallen then in battle. Um, presumably that will create, I guess, in late October, uh, it'll, you know, yeah, it'll create an additional two star uh, general in Constantinople. That is, um, that's a real shame. You know, I was just thinking actually uh, the other day, we haven't lost a commander yet, and I was thinking, God, I hope we don't lose Omar Pasha. Bucket if we do, but uh, yeah. 
And that was the second battle. That was Zvolnik. And that was this one. Right, I mean, one of our more capable uh, junior commanders, it has to be said. I mean, I say a junior commander, he was actually a three-star general, but um, that's deeply regrettable. Um, it, I mean, it interferes with our plans a little bit, because of the, of the kind of junior officers in Omar's force, he was the most dynamic and capable commander. Um, yeah, well, we'll have to give that some thought. This force, um, let's have a look. Even with this command penalty, 18 days, mm. yeah, gone are the days where, well, the weather's not too bad, actually, but there's two river crossings, so, yeah, it's going to be tricky. Okay, we need to think on that. Um, yeah, the loss of a an important commander there. Um, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to give, give that some thought. Let's have a look at the situation in the east. Of course, in the east, we only have one three-star general. Hussein Avni is... Uh, the next best prospect for command that we have, but he's only a two-star general. He's only a lieutenant general, but... Um, well, anyway, Abdul Karim Nadir is nine days away from Kars. He's activated, but that's kind of moot, really. Uh, we'll continue to move him uh, into Kars, I think, and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, give him a period of rest, and I guess back... Uh, well, once we get to kind of November, we'll look to kind of... Um, Six days, okay, good. Organization is extremely low, though. We'll get, we'll get that to faint probe attack, but there doesn't appear to be anything there. And we'll sit that cavalry division in Aiden uh, for as long as we possibly can. Um, once it's there. Okay. Hadn't seen that. That's, uh, yeah, damn. Kershid Pasha. Rip. Rest in peace. That's... Um, a real loss. Uh, I mean, not quite the same blur as if we'd lost a really significant... Well, he was a three-star general, but uh, he didn't command the entire army, but he was in a position to, but yeah. Fallen with the colours. Okay. In terms of the economy, um, in re pretty good shape. Uh, I've reactivated conversion of agricultural goods so we can start diminishing that stockpile and building up um, preserved food. Once we get a large enough kind of stockpile of preserved food, I think the next construction is going to be another canned goods factory, um, probably in, in Ankara or something like that, so we can begin to convert, uh, basically convert some of our agriculture into sort of manufactured goods, if you like, uh, because we are producing more than we're exporting. Um, in terms of agriculture, we're, we're producing more than, than can be consumed on the domestic market also. So uh, yeah, we've got a surplus, that's good. We'll convert that into preserved food and in turn uh, begin a process of converting preserved food into manufactured goods. Everything's kind of everything's set really in terms of um, our kind of um, economic moves. We'll see what happens then going into late October. Uh, let's get uh, yeah, let's get Omar Pasha back into Sofia. Um, what division was it then? Okay, it was this division. Yeah, the cavalry forces have taken a, a real hiding in those those battles. They were big battles. I mean, they were victories, but yeah, they came at a bigger cost than I even realised actually. Um, I mean, it's a risk, I suppose. In the last analysis, he's leading troops into battle, isn't he? It's, it's, it's something that's going to happen. Um, and he was an aggressive general as well, so perhaps it's a matter of time. But, um, yeah, nothing else to really do this turn. Uh, no other significant kind of reports. Everything's stable in Libya. We're moving the cavalry division down into Aden. And our economic moves have been set. Uh, we're seeing some breaches. The Russians have made a breach in the fortress at Plevna. That means that Plevna might, might be on a clock. Plevna has only got a fairly small command there, actually. It's, uh, what, 15,000 men? So, okay, more than I thought, 27,000. Uh, the Russians haven't assaulted um, Salonika as we thought, but Salonika, the fortress, is intact. And, um, yeah, holding tight. Both of these fortresses need to hold really for a month or two um, in order for us to get Omar uh, in kind of good shape in, in Sofia and, and kind of make a move north. I mean, from Sofia, he could sort of move through Agosta and into into Plevna. We could even engage three Russian forces in one move, uh, maybe destroying one entirely. Uh, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a month away. Yeah, Omar Pasha's forces is in rough shape. He needs to kind of recover, reorganize, and get some supplies squared away. Um, that's it then. We'll pass the turn from here, and I'll uh, see you in late October.
Okay, and welcome back. And yeah, a bad term. The kind of campaigning season ends as it begins in calamity. You can see our national morale is back down to 84. Russia sits at, what, 97. And yeah, for good reason. You can see that in the north, Pleva has fallen, as has Salonika. I'm really surprised that Salonika fell so easily. Um, I thought there was a chance that Pleva might fall. Uh, but let's have a look at the detail of that. So first of all, we can see that... Um, well, this is uh, this is Salonika, actually. It looks like the, the garrison largely surrendered. Um, but yeah, the Russians pressed an assault with a relatively small force. You know, very disappointing. And um, yeah, they've done very well there. We're losing that one national morale just from the scale of kind of loss, plus, of course, five from the fact that it's, uh, uh, you know, a, a significant kind of um, city in the Balkans. Um, it's basically one of our kind of... Um, objectives list if you like it's one of our objective cities the cities we seek to hold um in addition to that oh no i beg your pardon in fact yeah the uh, that we <laughs> sorry we lose the one national morale point for the loss of plevna we lose five for salonico so six in total um plus um uh, plus one from war weariness we get two from national morale and resilience so there is a kind of desire that suggests there is still a desire to kind of carry on uh the war uh so you know some of that loss is offset but what we have now is, you know, this worrying situation of a large Russian force fresh on the back of a defeat at uh, Sarajevo. We have Russian forces now in the north here with nowhere else to go really other than either Sofia or Adrianople and a Russian force in the south at Salonika, which has nothing to do other than move north. However, the Salonika force is in rough shape. It requires replacements and we've got Omar slap bang in the middle. Uh, with a force now, you know, having just lost um, a really, really good commander and completely shattered, having sustained heavy losses. And one of the divisions has to be, you know, the cavalry division. One of the independent cavalry divisions has to be almost reconstructed from scratch. The cavalry divisions have taken some heavy losses, but we can see that beyond that, you know, uh, they require a period of, uh, of time for rest and replacement. I'm not sure what to do here. My thinking here is to deposit the force inside the fortress of Sofia. It's a little bit risky if they bring all their forces to bear simultaneously and try and assault Sofia. It's a little bit dangerous, but, you know, that force will be combined with, we've got some Bashi bazooks in there, be combined with a fortress detail, which makes me think that we would be able to hold out. We only would need to hold out here for sort of a fortnight or a month. Um, draw on some supplies and yeah get some replacements squared away uh, but then the worry is if this force becomes kind of isolated from uh, Constantinople this could be sort of dangerous the other option is you know there is a British force there a small British force the other option is to kind of set to evade combat retreat if engaged and try and fall back all the way to Adrianople that takes nine days um, yeah that's the other option I've not decided which means I'm probably going to leave this recording here to kind of consider this move a little bit uh, but we're in a dangerous situation here and we're not in a position to attack i mean we only need to hold out here for a fortnight if we can get some supplies and replacements and get some organization squared away inside kind of um inside sofia then that would form the basis for a fairly quick counter attack it's quite likely we'd be able to take you know retake salonica even next turn maybe i don't know um, but yeah, again, we, you know, the war in the West is not going well. Uh, we need to kind of, we need to get other four squared away so that they can conduct kind of independent operations. We need to get three-star general sorted out there. Um, it doesn't look like uh, we have, um, yeah, a replacement general that's spawned yet, uh, that's been created to replace Kershid Pasha. Maybe we are at the limits of our kind of um, officer inventory. Uh, yeah, maybe we've kind of tucked too deep into the roster, but um, in the east anyway, um, Abdul Karim uh, is in place. He's activated. He's set to a defensive posture for the time being. Let's have a look at how long it's taken. 24 days. Yeah, I mean the rain and the snow's come down again now. Um, 15 days, however, to Tiflis. But it looks like the Russians have got a pretty big force in Tiflis. Um, I think we're going to sit tight for another turn. Just defend cars. We're set to hold at all costs. Um, yeah, tough round, really tough round. Um, let's have a quick look in Aden. Yeah, so the uh, cavalry division now completely exhausted, low on supplies has reached Aden. We're going to just sit tight. We'll sit to kind of retreat if engaged because it's in a vulnerable situation. Um, yeah, and that's it pretty much. Uh, we've got um, a merchant fleet that's completed now in Constantinople. That's going to set sail and head to the. Um, 
the United States um, Eastern Seaboard Maritime Trade Box. Um, we've got Europe really well covered. The Imperial Fleet is kind of reorganized. Um, I'm thinking it might just be time to sort it, maybe conduct a kind of standing patrol, like a naval combat patrol. Um, as to where, my thinking is probably let's just sit in the Aegean. Uh, we'll just conduct a patrol around the Aegean, actually. And then east into the... Uh, yeah, into the Western Black Sea. <clears throat> In terms of our trade balance, let's kind of get that set. We've got heavy, heavy conversion going on, so we want to make sure that we've got uh, ample. Ample agricultural goods to cover that. Okay, that looks kind of good. Looks like we are now beginning to export a little bit of cattle. Okay, let's just check our assets balance really quick, make sure that we're meeting demand and everything's kind of okay. Yeah, it seems quite good. Okay, so I mean, the economy's good. We have completed, just completed a, um, a manufactured goods factory. Uh, that's our first kind of industrial revolution factory, really, uh, which is good. We've got another one fast on the heels, and we've got two kind of um, military factories kind of... Uh, will be completed probably early to mid next year I think. Uh, the, ma the other manufactured goods factory will probably be completed in the winter I think this year which is good. But yeah, good a good round for exports actually. Um, dyes is selling well, fish and cereals we could, uh, could do with probably more cereal exports but anyway. Um, yeah, not too much disruption in the economy, good kind of good sort of trade balance this turn but yeah a disappointing turn militarily so I'm gonna have to kind of um, Consider how much of a risk we take with Omar's force. Do we put him in Sofia, give him a bit of time um, to recover, run a little bit of a risk? I mean, basically, let's have a look. We're looking at 1.3 a day, 1.46. Inside the fortress, we'll be sitting at average recovery 2.93. I mean, if we set it to uh, evade, you know, uh, even more, but then that's dangerous. I don't think we'll be able to do that because. Um, yeah, if, if Sophia is instantly attacked, this force surrenders. I think we we'll probably will do that, um, but I'll think on it anyway. And um, I think from here, there won't be any other military moves. There's very little that we can do from here. Um, let's get this force out of any kind of danger. Um, yeah, so the next uh, the next video will start in early November. And yeah, the beginning of the kind of uh, the cold period, I suppose. Uh, I'll try to make the next video a little bit longer because uh, this one is being uploaded a bit later than expected on Sunday evening and the next video will be on Monday um, tomorrow um, yeah so I'll make the next video a bit longer um, cover a few turns maybe we even sort of cover the rest of the year push on to kind of um, push on to the new year or to the kind of you know January 54 and see if we can kind of uh, get some recovery squared away we take Salonika, we take Plevna. Uh, it does on the surface of it look a little bit dangerous in the short term. I'm fairly confident that once Omar's force is recovered and has got some replacements and cohesion, which we, we could we could achieve in the next fortnight. I mean, he could, I think, probably defeat all of these forces, these three forces combined, actually. Uh, so it may even be fortuitous if they move towards Sofia. He's that good of a commander, and his field command is, you know, is, is well tested. Um, so yeah, we'll end the we'll end the video there. And um, I mean, the Battle of Sarajevo was successful, but at what cost? And what do we really gain from that? Sarajevo is still controlled by the Russians; they ultimately hold that ground. And that kind of little detour cost us, you know. I suppose Salonika and Plevna. In retrospect, I wish I'd kind of moved to secure Salonika now. Uh, it's a national morale objective. It would have been a safer play. And who knows, maybe we'd still have Kershid Pasha with us, but um, yeah, his loss will be really kind of gravely felt and is, is a disappointment. And that really combined with, yeah, the loss of two fortress and, gar you know, fortress and depot kind of towns is, uh, is bad stuff indeed. So on a disappointing note then, I'll leave the recording there and we'll pick up, uh, we'll pick up this campaign in early November uh, 53. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.